Hey people, got the ThinkPad X13 here. Just going to try and unbox it. They've uh, literally shipped us a ThinkPad in the ThinkPad box. At least there's a mirror bag on the outside, so this way you can't see the content while well, it's in the transit. So just a usual ThinkPad packaging. It's quite a tall box actually. Um, so we'll put the other side away. That's cool. You press record, right? Just double check. Can only do this once. Here we go. I think the packaging inside will look a little bit different to the T14 and T14S we've seen. Ooh. I think this is an older style of packaging. Okay, 65 volts, the new USB C charger. Just put it away for now. Oh no. They've reverted to these cardboard things instead of a foam that you have with the T14 and T14S. I mean, arguably, this really doesn't give you much cushioning. Let's just hope that it has arrived safely. Here's the laptop. Checking for dents. Nope, nothing. Okay, that's fine. But it has arrived safely with these things. If they can try something more foam based, it will be a lot more secure. We sometimes see the edge of the laptop being damaged when it's sent in this documentation. I suppose it's just switching it on, really. From the box, that's oh, there is really minimal packaging, very businessy. You only get what you need. Oddly satisfying. So the material immediately feels a lot more related to the T14S or even the L series, strangely. And on the inside. Ah, here we go. Very nice. Ah, much better. A lot easier in terms of action than the T series we've um, seen. Charging port, USB C, no Thunderbolt on the AMD model. Ethernet adapter if you have one. USB 3, which is helpful. HDMI 2, audio jack, quite nice. Another USB port. Switching on, the display feels quite bright. You can see the red, not the lower color gamut display. The key action feels good. Your region is set to United Kingdom. Is that correct? Right, if I just go and get set up. So F9, F10, F11, so these are the new shortcuts. It makes the teleconferencing a little bit easier, especially in the work from home era. The keys actually feel quite small for some reason. Put an X13 on top of a T14. So you can see, height wise not much difference. It's actually quite a bit more compact due to a 13.3 inch screen. And obviously carbon is going to be even more compact and in a different price range. Sidewise, the lens stops just about when the hinge stops on the T14. The material feels a little bit different to the T14, which we're more used to. It's a lot closer to the T14S, I would probably say. And of course, it can bend if that's your cup of tea. We didn't order it with the 4G. We'll take a look later. Already can feel a little bit heat though on the base. Again, we'll look into it in more detail. So around the edges, but quite sturdy. The center of it feels a little bit hollow. And around the logo, it feels a little bit hollow. That's not bad. The speakers, I think they're a little bit bigger than the T14S. Just have a T14 stack underneath. I wasn't wrong in the first impression in that if we align the key to the left, you can see very clearly that the X13 has more compact key. At first, it just felt a little bit different. Personally, if it's a case of being to get away with a little bit more weight, I would really prefer the T14 keyboard. It's just a lot more comfortable to type on from the first impression. I expect that with the X13, you can very easily adjust to it so it's not um, shouldn't be an issue so we have a x1 carbon 7 here and we've aligned the top of the keyboard you can see that x13's keyboard is less long even though we've aligned it to the end of the keyboard conversely aligning the keyboard to the left as we can see here if we go to the other side you will realize the keyboard is less long on the other side as well it would be useful to have a think of the 13 versus 14 inch before you buy especially if you have your larger hands the smaller keyboard might be a little bit less comfortable for longer typing carbon on the bottom, as you can see the Thunderbolt label. The X13 height-wise is definitely a little bit less thin than the carbon. Whether you notice this once you start using the system will probably be another question. Having aligned the X13 on top of the carbon, the carbon is a little bit longer due to the fact that the carbon has a 14-inch screen. Keep in mind how impressive it is for the carbon to have this lens, which is very similar. As you can see, the Dolby Vision screen on the X1 Carbon is brighter, more vibrant, and just absolutely stunning. This is not a like-for-like -like comparison. It's only meant to showcase one of the reasons why the X1 Carbon is still the flagship product, regardless of the processor. Without a doubt, leaving fingerprint marks and other wares on the lid will probably be a day-to-day -day occurrence. What we would suggest is to have a microfiber cloth. To do this would be relatively simple. We're into Windows, so Ryzen 7. 
16 gig of RAM, do channel, 5.2 SSD. This is a quick ship spec. In addition to the keyboard change, the AX Wi-Fi is another improvement in this generation. Uh, Vega graphics. But coming from an Intel laptop, this is something to get used to. Oof! 16 thread. That's wow. So the laptop so far, it's coming away very, very quietly. You can see the process running between 2 to 3 gigahertz. Somehow it's just really quiet. It's impressive. The T14S and the X13 should be using very similar motherboard. Single performance is likely to be comparable with Intel, whereas the multi-threaded performance is where it really stretches its legs. To get similar performance, you would typically need an Intel 6-core processor, so a P53 or something similar. It seems Lenovo has managed to do it with AMD in you know, a 13.3 body, which is super impressive. Do this, we'll keep an eye on the power setting. Reset this one. And if we keep an eye on the same number, which is this one, you can hear click on the mouse. It goes up to 20 volts for a short amount of time, usually around 8 seconds or something similar, depending on the temperature and other workload. And then you'll see it dropping down to under 18, so usually 17.5 to 18 volts. In comparison to the larger T14S, this is inevitably a smaller chassis, especially in comparison to the even better cooled T14. Performance wise, it's not going to be as fast as those. It'd probably be reasonable to assume that it will be within 10% of the T14S, which is around 10% slower than the T14. It's too early to say. What I'm asking is whether Ryzen 5 might be a sensible option for this, keeping in mind that it's in a smaller build with more limited cooling capacity. With the Ryzen 5, you're probably more likely to achieve closer to the advertised performance, whereas Ryzen 7 requires more power to run fully. So it goes back what are you trying to spend. We'll hopefully cover more of this in a more detailed review to be followed. We hope that you find this interesting and um, keep well.